Cadres poll predicts victory for Dominica's ruling party in next month's general election. And in sport, Jamaica Scorpions score a win against regional Super 50 Group A leaders Barbados Pride. I'm Don Paris and this is Caribbean in 10 for Thursday, November 21st, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. Cut you up like a electrical company. Yeah, yeah. Let you feel like to Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My wife has given me permission to speak tonight. You know, some 50 years ago, a small group of visionary students on the campus of Howard University, in their low to mid-twenties, saw a need not only for the students to connect among themselves on the campus, Agency Caribbean Development Research Services, CADRIS, is predicting a win for the ruling Dominica Labour Party, DLP, in next month's general elections. CADRIS Director Peter Wickham presented the findings of the latest poll at a news conference in Roseau this morning. Respondents were asked about issues of concern, their preferred leader, and voting intention. According to Wickham, the main issue was cost of living, and Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt remains the preferred leader. But he said he also observed the issue of voter lethargy ahead of the poll. The lethargy is the extent to which voters are perhaps not excited uh, to vote, or alternatively, uh, a lot less enthusiastic about voting than they were in the previous election. And I can tell you at this point that voter lethargy is definitely up in Dominica. I, I don't believe that comes as a surprise to anyone in that there is uh, uh, an increased lack of enthusiasm regarding voting, and I'm talking about voting for either political party on this occasion. Um, the question then of success really is about who is better able to motivate voters at this point in time, and I should point out that the issue of voter lethargy can impact negatively on our projections for a Labour win. Uh, certainly, if Labour is able to get its voters out on election day and is able to deal constructively with this issue of lethargy, then Labour can win. If, however, the opposition is able to better exploit this issue of lethargy and get its voters out, then the opposition UWP can win. Ghana's President David Granger is set to meet today with the leader of the Alliance for Change, AFC, as the Governing Coalition, a Partnership for National Unity, APNU, seeks to reach agreement ahead of elections scheduled for next March. But he made it clear that the agreement should not be subject to deadlines or threats. The AFC, which wants to choose the prime ministerial candidate, was hoping for a concrete agreement with the APNU by Monday, and executive member Dominic Gaskin last week threatened that the party will contest the elections alone if no agreement is reached. But President Granger said putting a deadline on the discussions will not result in the best outcome of the talks. The negotiations are determined by agreement, not by deadlines. And uh, we have been uh, communicating with each other, meeting, negotiating. Um, for much of October and November so far. And the, the question of a deadline will not necessarily uh, bring about the best outcome. I am very confident that uh, were we to sit without noise, sit down soberly and quietly, we will arrive at an outcome which is the best for Guyana. The chairman of Jamaica's Economic Growth Council is calling for non-performing permanent secretaries to be removed from their posts. Michael Lee Chin believes this will increase accountability in the public sector and also lead to higher economic growth. We get more in this report from TVJ News. 
Currently, the law does not allow permanent secretaries to be removed from office. For the chairman of the Economic Growth Council, Michael Leachin, that's a problem. He says in a corporation, a person responsible for implementation is the chief executive officer. He argues that in government, permanent secretaries are responsible for the implementation of policies. In corporations, if a business plan is not executed, the CEO is fired. In governments, if policies are not implemented in a timely basis, no one is fired. He says until accountability issues are fixed, public sector transformation and higher economic growth will not happen. We can fix this lack of accountability issue only if both sides of the house work diligently together to change the laws and, and probably the constitution pertaining to the removal of permanent secretaries, secretaries when they are underperforming. Presently, permanent secretaries are permanent. They cannot be re removed based on the, con uh, the, the, the Constitution. And that is, uh, uh, in Canada, that's not the case. But some may say that permanent secretaries are permanent for a reason, like to minimize political interference. Stay with us, your media sport is next. <laughs> Take a look at sports now and Puma Bonner sustained his great form with a fourth list A-100 before off-spinner Jamie Merchant snatched a four-wicket haul as Jamaica Scorpions exacted revenge on Group A leaders Barbados Pride with a 26-run victory yesterday as the Regional Super 50 continued. Behind Bonner's near run a ball 112, Scorpions piled up a tournament best 331 for nine off their 50 overs at Connery with West Indies all-rounder Robman Powell falling narrowly short of his second century of the campaign, blasting a 59 ball 97. In reply, Pride came up short on 305 for eight despite a superb effort from captain Jonathan Carter who made 97 off 90 balls. Opener Lenico Boucher struck a breezy 47, while all-rounder Roshan Primus lashed an unbeaten 39 down the order, but Merchant proved the difference with a destructive spell of 4 for 35. The victory for Scorpions was an important one as it revived their semi-final quest, pulling them alongside second-place Leeward Island Hurricanes on 16 points. Bermuda captain Dante Levrock has expressed disappointment after his team's hopes of retaining their CONCACAF Nations League top flight status were dashed by Ural and Tuna's winner deep into the injury time as Gold Cup champions Mexico 1-1 on Tuesday night. Levrock, who gave Bermuda a shock 10th minute lead with a header from Osagi Bascom, said, quote, I'm disappointed. It's tough to concede with 40 seconds left, but I'm proud of my boys who fought hard, end quote. Bermuda had needed at least a draw to guarantee finishing above Panama in the three-team group and avoid relegation to League B. Bermuda lost 4-1 at home to Panama before winning the away leg 2-0. They lost their home leg against Mexico 5-1. And that's Caribbean in 10. Join us at 6.30 this evening for Caribbean Newsline. Do have a good afternoon.